I am extremely disturbed based on the last round of question and answer that each of you believes that the convening authority is what maintains discipline and order within your ranks. If that is your view, I don't know how you can say that having 19,000 sexual assaults and rapes a year is discipline and order. I do not understand how you can say that of those 19,000 cases, to only have approximately 2,400 even reported because the victims tell us that they are afraid to report because of retaliation and the blame they will get and the scorn they will get from their colleagues is order and discipline. And I really cannot understand how 2,400 cases, only 240 of which go to trial, can be result in you believing that that authority is giving you discipline and order. It is the exact opposite of discipline and order. And I'm very grateful for all of the changes that have been made. Each of you gave opening testimony that was very strong and thoughtful about the kinds of changes you are making. And I appreciated that I heard from each of you that there is a zero tolerance. And I appreciate that I hear from each of you about the training that you are giving your lawyers and the training that you are giving your prosecutors and the training that you are giving your advocates. And that is all well and good, but if the convening authority is the only decision maker of whether a case goes to trial or proceeds, and the only decision maker about whether to overturn a case, well then all that training and all those excellent lawyers and prosecutors you have don't mean a, di a difference. It doesn't make a difference because the person with the authority is not the one who has that years of training in terms of legal ability and prosecutorial discretion and the understanding of the nature of a rape, that it is a violent crime. It is not ask her when she's sober. That is not what this issue is about. So I appreciate the work you are doing. I honestly do, but it's not enough. And if you think you are achieving discipline and order with your current convening authority framework, I am sorry to say you are wrong. And every victim that has come in front of this committee and every story we have heard over the weeks and months shows that we have not even begun to address this problem. So to Lieutenant General Harding, let's talk about the Aviano case. Do you think justice was done in that case? I think that the convenient authority reviewed the facts and made an independent determination. Um, and that was his obligation as given to him by this body. Uh, granted, it was 65 years ago, but he fulfilled a statutory obligation. Uh, and he did so with integrity. And do you think the five senior officers that were the jury in that trial did not do justice? I can't say that they did not, ma'am. I think both the jury and the convenient authority did their duty. Well, as they reached the opposite decision, in one instance, justice was not done. Which instance do you believe justice was not done? I can't say, I'm not going to conclude that justice was or was not done. What I will conclude is that all parties did their job from my review. All parties um, did what they were asked to do by the law. Well, one of the parties was wrong. And if you are the victim in that case, to have gone through eight months of testimony, of providing evidence, I can assure you, she does not believe justice was done. I'd like to move towards some questions concerning how we can evaluate a stronger system. Mr. Taylor. What do you think of the Aviato case? I am very concerned about the message received uh, as a result of that case. Um, to, to back up just a little bit, um, each of the people at this table gave a response to Senator Graham's question, but uh, except for me. Uh, I believe that we have to look very carefully about uh, whether there is a continuing value to the authority provided to the convening authority to throw out the findings, to reject findings uh, of, of 
of a military trial, of a, of a court-martial. Uh, as uh, Senator Levin indicated, uh, the, uh, uh, there is a very robust system of appellate rights uh, that are available uh, to protect uh, the accusers. Um, and I think we have to very carefully reconsider uh, whether there needs to be changes to Article 60, whether there needs to be uh, uh, further guidance on how Article 60 is to be employed, uh, but uh, uh, the Secretary has, has charged me to take a, uh, a, a, a thorough and open and, and searching uh, look into the continued need for Article 60 as it exists today, and I intend to do so. It will be informed certainly by uh, the experience of, of these very fine uh, lawyers and leaders uh, and by others uh, to make sure that we don't do damage uh, to uh, good order and discipline, but uh, there, there is something that, that seems odd about the, uh, the power to, uh, uh, to reject findings that came out of a, uh, of a jury in the absence of, of some major obvious problem. Uh, so I, I'm concerned by the, the, uh, the message that, that is received. I think uh, we have to redouble our efforts to make sure that uh, uh, victims uh, uh, are willing to come forward uh, and uh, are willing to uh, entrust the military justice system. I think we need to redouble our efforts to ensure that victims feel supported um, and uh, respected um, and, and honored for uh, uh, the service that, that they're doing by, uh, by coming forward um, and, uh, and saying no. Thank you. I have a, a, a many other questions that I'll submit for the record for each of you.